Okay, so hello and welcome to this video tutorial for RC Hibbler's uh, Engineering Mechanics Statics textbook. So we have this problem here from chapter two, which is asking, determine the magnitude of the resultant force at A, uh, where A is this point here in the diagram, and we have two forces acting about point A. We've got FB and FC. Um, so this is kind of combining uh, ideas that we've used in previous problems. Uh, as ever, if you want to find uh, the resultant force or if you want to add forces together, uh, you want to determine their x, y, and z components and just add them together respectively. And that will give you the components of your resultant force, which will then enable you to, to determine the magnitude of that resultant force. Stuff that hopefully uh, you guys are already pretty familiar with at this stage. So just to save a bit of time here, I've determined the x, y, and z components of these position vectors a, b, and a, c. Um, let's go ahead and solve for their magnitudes here. So I can say the magnitude of a, b here is equal to uh, the square root of, uh, using Pythag here, uh, the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 6 squared which takes a value of seven. And noting that the magnitudes for the X, Y, and Z components of uh, AC are all the same as those for AB, we can see that you'll get the exact same result for AC, that the, the, the magnitude of AC is gonna be seven. Um, okay, we can solve then for uh, the alpha, beta, and gamma angles for AB and AC. Um, let's start off with um, that for a b so we can call this alpha b b for force b um so we'd say here that uh, the cost of alpha b is going to be equal to a b x over uh, a b uh, we can say therefore alpha b is equal to uh, three over my seven uh, not three over seven at all, sorry. Uh, it's going to be equal to the inverse cos of uh, three over seven. There we go. Um, beta B, that's going to be equal to the inverse cos of minus two over seven. And uh, gamma B, it's going to be equal to the inverse cos of minus six over seven. Uh, we can solve them for, well, solve, we can express them for C as well. Uh, so we can say uh, alpha C is the inverse cos of two over seven. Uh, for beta C, uh, we've got the inverse cos of three over seven. And for gamma C, We've got the inverse cost of minus six over seven. Okay. So we have the alpha, beta, and gamma values for forces um, B and C here. We can then use these to uh, solve for the X, Y, and Z components of each of those forces. Let's start off with FB. So we can say, um, let's call this FB comma X. Um, rearranging this first equation here, so we multiply both sides by F here, um, where F is going to be uh, 840. We can say that FB X is 840 uh, cos of alpha B. Noting here, though, of course, that alpha B takes this value of the inverse cos of uh, 3 over 7. The cost functions cancel, as we've encountered before. So I, I can rewrite this, this cost alpha B, just as three sevenths. Uh, for the Y component, FB comma Y, it's going to be 840 times minus two over seven. Uh, 
and f b comma z is going to be 840 um, minus 6 over 7. Let, let's just uh, numericize all of these. So 840 times 3 sevenths. Uh, that takes a value here. Can't do it in my head, unfortunately. Uh, of 360. Uh, 840 times minus 2 sevenths takes value of minus 240. And uh, 840 times minus 6 sevenths, that's take, that takes value of seven, minus 720. Uh, we can do the same for, for C as well. Just to save a little bit of time here, um, I've already done it. Let, let's just pick up these here and move them down if it will let me. Okay, so we've got force B and for, the, the X, Y, and Z components of uh, force B and force C here, all written out. All we need to do now really is to add them together respectively. So we can say that, um, let's call it FR, so our resultant force here, uh, takes a value or, or yeah, a vector value of um, 360 plus 120 times i uh, plus minus 240, uh, minus 240 uh, plus 180 j, oh dear, uh, plus what have we got here? Minus 720, uh, minus 360. Okay. Uh, we we can try and shortcut this, or let's let's just go the long long way here. We can simplify this. Uh, so we've got uh, ve therefore vector r uh, uh, vector f r is equal to uh, 480 i. Um, uh, minus 60 J um, minus 1080 K. Uh, the original question was asking for the magnitude of the resultant force here. So we, we have one final step here. We can say the magnitude of uh, FR using Pythag here, we can say this is equal to the square root of 480 squared uh, plus 60 squared uh, plus 1080 squared, which when we bung into our calculator, this gives us a value of around 1,183. Um, yeah, so if you, uh, uh, I should write out the units here as well, sorry. So th these were in Newtons here. Um, so I can write Newtons there. Uh, I could also express this as it does in, in the textbook as 1.18 kilonewtons. Okay, so if you have any questions or comments about that problem, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching.